must belong Each and every one All of us belong In this sacred circle All of us belong Each and every one All of us belong In this sacred circle We are sisters, brothers, children belong in this sacred circle. Welcome to Homecoming, each of us with God and all of us together in spiritual family. And uh, normally I would be welcoming my wonderful sister Elizabeth. Uh, she is here with us, but she's in the background. Um, we have had a few technical difficulties and also some uh, difficulties on uh, uh, on the home front. And so I'll be doing homecoming just by myself. Elizabeth will, will be working in the in the background on technicalities. So once again, welcome. Uh, and today we are going to focus on uh, how this way of living that we've been talking about in a set of spiritual family relationships, uh, if it becomes the central reality in our lives, if we really live into these relationships, how it actually begins to work in a, uh, to bring a profound sense of unity, uh, a sense of simplicity and order uh, into the complexities of modern life. Uh, so that's what we're going to be talking about. But before we launch into that whole conversation, let's do what we usually do. Let's first enjoy some worship. Uh, and in a sense, you know, we're talking about unifying our lives, unity, coherence, order, uh, making our lives singular uh, and uh, unified. And uh, uh, in a sense, worship is actually a, a fundamental experience of union, right? It is a loving embrace. It's really becoming one with God. Uh, we rest into enjoying with the presence of God, the presence of God as our Father and our Mother deep inside of us. So let's get quiet, and uh, we'll move our awareness to that place where God is in the deepest place inside of us. Let's take a few moments to uh, rest in God with love. Thank you, great God, you who manifest in so many different ways, who loves us parentally, nurtures us, guides us, companions us, who is our, our father, our mother, and who has come down to live among us as our master Jesus, showing us this new and higher to way higher way to live in spiritual family relationships so thank you for being with us and inspiring us this morning helping us to enjoy uh, companionship with you as we share with each other amen so um in a certain sense, what we have been exploring uh, in, in this whole last few months in homecoming, in a very systematic way, 
uh, are the central and essential truths of Jesus' teachings, uh, how he lived them, and more importantly, how we can live them in our lives and in our world today. And we have been approaching this topic as, uh, as a way of living in a set of personal relationships, uh, and that it can best be understood as a vast spiritual family, in a sense. It's a set of spiritual relationships with God and with each other. And in a sense, it is really a single unified experience with a number of essential elements that are part of that singular experience. Um, and and I'll uh, pop up on the uh, on our share screen here. This is kind of what we've been looking at, right? Is that it is a singular experience, and that these are, in a sense, it's almost in a sense that this is a large space that we enter this way of living, and we can enter through any one of these doorways. Right, So we can enter through the doorway of parent-child relationship. We can enter through the doorway of spiritual sister-brother relationships or the indwelling spirit or the will of God. These are ways of understanding facets of this singular experience of living in spiritual family, which is what is going on in our lives here in this world and actually is what is going on in the entire cosmos in a much larger sense. So, um, this way of living starts and is anchored in an intimate interior relationship with our creator parent. Uh, and that relationship provides for us two very critical gifts. It provides a profound sense of love and nurture uh, and sustaining love, sustenance. And secondly, it provides a sense of structure in order, and, and really a profound sense of guidance uh, and direction and destination. It shows us where we are going in this life and in the larger sense in the life that waits for us after this life is over. And without these two spiritual gifts, we simply cannot function well. Uh, in a sense, we were created and designed to function with these two these two profound realities right god's constant affection and god's constant guidance showing us a way forward and both of these absolutely critical things are being given to us by god in the sanctum of the inner life uh in in the interaction of prayer and worship in communion so this functions together really as a coherent, singular experience. Uh, and it is there in that interior space that we receive this nourishment, this sustenance uh, of God's love, without which we really can't function in this life. So we are surrounded with God's love and filled with that affection constantly, and we're also guided by God's will that we're given a moment-to-moment -moment sense of leading, showing us how to live and how to be uh, properly, effectively, and in, in, in a much more whole and large sense, how to be in relationship with each other. And so um, all of this, all these are critical pieces in this way of life in the family of God and, and in our relationships with each other. And my sense is that what happens naturally and even inevitably uh, is that the experience, the fruits of our relationship with God begin uh, out of that interior space, begin to overflow out into our relationships with each other. Uh, the love of God begins to move through us and out of us and towards the people all around us. So, and an additional part of that, I believe, is the, the guidance, the inspiration of the spirit of truth, Jesus' presence with us, uh, beginning to come into us and through us with greater and greater clarity and constancy. 
so that we have a sense of higher priorities and purposes that begin to develop overall, both in a larger and longer term sense in our lives. We have this sense of uh, purpose, direction, actual specific things to go, directions to move in, in a larger sense, uh, in the trajectory of our lives, and also in the moment-to-moment -moment experience, our daily interactions with each other. So what begins to happen is, you know, it, it's really a, a whole new set of experiences, inner and outer skills and capacities that begin to grow in us over time. And actually, I think God is growing those experiences within us. Uh, and as we spoke about last week, we focused on faith. Our faith does play a critical role in this unitive, uh, unfolding experience. Um, it is only by our faith choice that we enter into and engage in these spiritually guided interactions, first with God's indwelling spirit and then with all of the people all around us. Uh, so the, the faith choice is our desire to mobilize and to pour ourselves into this experience and begin it. And so as we exercise our faith more and more and more and more powerful and mature ways, I think God can begin to, to move us forward. In a sense, God begins to grow us up as the children of God uh, and as increasingly compassionate sisters and brothers to each other. Um, and, and, you know, in this whole unified way that this works, in a sense, the last key element uh, in this way of living in spiritual family is, is the time perspective. We begin to understand that we have begun a journey that will have no end, that will go on forever. And that really changes the coherence and the overall nature of it. Uh, because the possibilities are so vast and so far-reaching because they spring from God, and, and God is limitless in, in divine possibilities. So, in a sense, this journey of spiritual growth may have numerous uh, and significant destinations and junctures, uh, but even eventually our, our attainment of paradise at the far end of, uh, of this part of the journey is simply a temporary stopping place before we resume our journey forward, uh, our journey of service and growth uh, out into the into the cosmos. Um, so the last thing that, that I want to share here before we move into some worship and, and think about and consider these things um, is that this experience, this coherent experience of uh, 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 it's a way of living in, in spiritual family, has two very powerful unifying influences in our lives. One, in our individual lives, I think it helps to make them much more meaningful. Even down here in our life on this world, with all of its limitations, our lives here, even beginning, really have a grand and eternal purpose. We have a sense of the destiny towards which we are headed. We know why we are alive and why we are here, and we know where we are going. And that makes a huge difference in this life. You think about the folks that don't have that sense, that experience of being loved uh, on a moment-to-moment -moment basis and nourished uh, uh, sustained with that affection, and they don't have the sense of the overall nature of what we're here doing and where it is we're going in this life and its continuity into the afterlife. And uh, that's that makes life very, very difficult and very disunified in a sense, very chaotic and directionless uh, in a sense. Um, so, this way of life is unifying for us individually, personally, but I think it's also unifying and unitive in a second very, very important way. And that is, if we really are beginning to live in spiritual family, it begins to provide for us the, the capacity, the loving intention, 
and the ability to reach across all of the barriers that seem to divide us. Uh, this ideal of being part of God's universal family has the capacity to move us forward in developing and growing, creating the relationships and the solutions that we need uh, to eventually, slowly, steadily uh, begin functioning as a global family, which is not a small task. But without the, the sustenance of this higher vision, this higher ideal of living in spiritual family relationships, I don't think we really stand much of a chance to solve the problems that face us globally as humanity. With that vision, with that ideal, we are on our way. We may tack this way and that way. We may go backwards for a while before we resume our forward journey. But if we really are rooted in a sense of participating in this much larger set of family relationships with God, then we have the ideal and the vision that motivates us to be persistent, to reach across the barriers, work together, and eventually move our world steadily forward to the ages of light and life where we do really do uh, and really will function as a global spiritual family. So the last thing I'd like to uh, share with, you, uh, with all of you, and normally I would be turning it over to Elizabeth, but as I mentioned earlier, Elizabeth's got some challenges on the home front uh, today, and so we'll be moving directly after I share a few passages from the Revelation. We'll move uh, directly into our period of worship, uh, and then we'll come back and move into our uh, breakouts. But before we do that, the last thing I want to share is a few passages about sort of the unifying nature of this whole way of living. So... Uh, Here's the, the three passages, and they have in common the theme of unification, of unity, coherence, uh, functioning as a, a singular gestalt, a whole, uh, this way of life and spiritual family relationships. The activation of religion is super emotional, unifying the entire human experience on transcendent levels through contact with and release of spiritual energies in the mortal life. So that's pretty significant. Uh, there are powerful realities and energies that get released in us when we engage in worship, when we in faith approach God and say, show me the way, show me the way to live in my life Show me the way to make decisions, to take actions that transform the relationships I'm in. Show me a way to make the way to make contributions uh, toward your purposes. Very powerful energies are released within us that will, uh, I think, empower us to do things that we otherwise would not be able to do. Uh, and the second passage here. But the great problem of religious living consists in the task of unifying, there's that word again, the soul powers of the personality by the dominance of love. The highest happiness is indissolubly linked with spiritual progress. Spiritual growth yields lasting joy, peace which passes all understanding. And then the last very brief line, the religion of Jesus is the most powerful unifying influence the world has ever known. So I'm going to stop share here. And uh, I hope that's giving you a, a few things to think about. And I'll have a couple of questions for you when we move into our breakout discussions. But now what we'll we'll do is, as we usually do, we'll move into our worship time, and uh, we'll take a good ten, a good ten minutes uh, for worship. We've got the, some extra time here this morning, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, bring up our worship app.
for a little meditation. And uh, please go ahead, take a few deep breaths. Uh, move your intention front and center to be with God inwardly, to join with God in the inner, the deepest inner place inside of you, which is where the indwelling spirit resides, to move into this place of uh, adoring God, sharing our affection with God, coming in worship like little children and saying, I love you to God and opening up to receive the flow of God's response to us with our intention to worship, the flow of that affection that surrounds us, fills us, and uh, and nourishes us and nurtures us, which is the beginning and, and uh, the place, in a sense, of the birth of all the realities that come into our lives that allow us to live in this different and higher way. So let's take... Uh, Let's take about 10 minutes in worship.
we've been talking about this experience of living our lives in this spiritual family that God at the very beginning of creation has made and that we are a part of and how it is a unitive singular experience in a certain sense uh, it's one reality and we can understand the facets of it and and intellectually discuss and share and talk about love talk about the will of god talk about faith talk about eternal life the spiritual parent child relationship and the sister brother relationships these are all facets of a singular experience uh the family way is is my best way of understanding it so in a certain sense this way of life in the family of god is the journey it's the destination of paradise and god you know who who is our our destiny uh and the journey the 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 end point towards which we are traveling and it is us at the same time it's the company and all of our angelic and higher celestial helpers who are helping us in that journey and who in a sense are our higher sisters and brothers in this larger universe spiritual family it's all one reality and once we get into the different facets of it and rest into the different facets of it we just let go and go with the experience of it as a whole as a single total experience and allow ourselves to go forward with god and with each other in this journey spontaneously uh, we have a sense of how it unfolds uh, inside of us and and in our lives dynamically as a singular reality that's unitive that's unifying and that is moving us forward toward our destiny so we're going to move now into our uh, discussion groups, and I've got a couple of questions for us uh, that uh, hopefully will provide some sort of some substance for uh, for the conversation. So I'm going to put that in the chat box, and uh, hopefully as Elizabeth is there uh, and can grab these questions. How has living spiritually brought unity and coherence and a profound sense of direction into your life? And secondly, how can the ideal of the universal family of God bring spiritual unity to our world and help us to solve the global problems that are challenging us? So those are the, the two questions to give some anchor to your conversations. And Elizabeth, please, if you would move us in yes. to uh, tw 20 minutes, 20 minutes of conversation till about five after the hour yes. uh, in, into our breakout groups. So I hope you enjoy your conversations. Okay. Well, hello to everybody. And I think uh, we have just about everybody back from our breakout conversation. So welcome back to all of you. Um, and I will share. I was able to find this is a favorite cartoon of mine i don't know how many of you have seen it <laughs> big panda you know tiny dragon is the wise one in this uh this cartoon <laughs> so big panda asks which is more important the journey or the destination and and tiny dragon says it's the company <laughs> So I love it. Um, and it's sort of a fitting start. Uh, I'm going to go ahead in just a moment. I'll remove spotlight. But it's it's a fitting start to our larger conversation. Because in a certain sense, the family way, which is a journey, right? It's a way forward. It's a pathway uh, in this set of living spiritual relationships with God and with each other, these family relationships it's a pathway forward through this life out of this life through this doorway we call death into the beginnings of the next life and and really moving forward in an eternal journey so it is a way it's a path uh through to paradise and then beyond and it is a living you know it's uh it has a destination it has multiple destinations so it's the journey, it's the destination, and of course, it is 
really, uh, front and center, it's the company. It's us together with God, with each other uh, in these living relationships. So it's all of it. And, and it's really not dividable. It's a single unit of whole. Uh, and it does provide coherence in life. And it does provide a sense of direction. And it provides deep and profound satisfaction, both in loving God and being loved by God and in loving each other and serving with each other and journeying together with each other. So I'm going to go ahead and remove Spotlight so we can all sort of see each other uh, fairly equally. Um, and welcome to you all. We have sort of a smallish crew because we've had some technical challenges uh, today in homecoming, but uh, you all have uh, overcome them and you are here with us. So thank you. We very much appreciate it. Um, so um, let's see, just a couple of announcements as usual. Uh, you can go to the playlist. If you go to on YouTube, you go to Urantia University, and then just a little bit underneath, you'll see one of the playlists is Homecoming, and we have our uh, accumulating series of uh, broadcasts. Um, so, you know, you can sort of see the, the cumulative presentation of topics which have culminated today in, uh, in this approach to the whole of the family way, a way of life in the family of God. And we'll be going forward. So I think we've got 13, 14 episodes up and we'll have eventually uh, 20, 30, 40, 50 episodes and, and counting. Uh, so use them, please. You go to the playlist, grab the URLs, share them with people you think might be interested in a particular topic. Uh, we appreciate that. Uh, help us to proliferate this sharing of the essential truths of the Urantia revelation, but put, put in simple, straightforward terms that people who are not readers of the revelation can still benefit from. So that's about it for announcements, I think. I'd like to open it up to conversation uh, around the wholeness of this way of life. And what has been your experience? What did you experience in the worships? What did you experience in the breakout conversations? Uh, around the sort of the integrity and and organic uh, uh, unitive nature of this way of living in spiritual family relationships. Um, I'm going to actually invite a few folks who maybe uh, might wish to share. Uh, many of you do not know Lillian and uh, James Mathui from uh, Kenya. Uh, but they are wonderful, uh, wonderful sister and brother, and Lillian uh, and or James, if you'd love to, like to share, we'd love to hear from you uh, uh, on your thoughts on this simplified sense of what the core truths of the revelation are and how to how to convey them. Uh, and uh, Rafi, it's nice to see you. And uh, I just see others, uh, Keith and and Carol Ray, it, uh, if you want to share anything, it'd be wonderful. And uh, so, yeah, maybe raise hands. You know, I think you know how to do that under reactions. You can, as I just did, raise your hand. And then you can also, at the same location, lower your hand. So we'll go ahead. Yes, please, uh, Lillian. And then uh, Lawrence. Go ahead, Lillian. Wonderful to see you here. Thank you so much, everyone. I had a wonderful experience with the worship. The calmness and the silence is what I needed to end my day with. I want to stay with that throughout. Thank you. Mm. Mm. And greetings from James. Well, greetings Tim, and lots of love to both of you. Uh, and we are very excited. I know you uh, you uh, have put in an application for uh, uh, our Urantia University Teacher Education Program, which we're very excited to uh, get to know you better and see you and visit with you and work with you over the coming years to uh, uh, to synergize our ministries, to bring our ministries together and help each other. And yes, the worship, you know, you've shared this before, when we've uh, spoken, the worship is critical. 
because that's where we really deeply encounter God and allow God to minister to us and give us everything, really, that we need to live this spiritual life and to be effective ministers, teachers. Uh, so without that worship experience, uh, um, we really can't do much, I don't think. it's For me, it's the foundation, the bedrock of our living relationship with God. And then it really impacts our relationships with each other. And to worship together is really enjoyable too. So thank you for that emphasis, Lillian. And thank you for uh, Lillian and James for joining us. Uh, uh, Lawrence and then uh, Patrick and Carol Ray. Um, in, in our breakout, me and Jim uh, both had uh, talked about similar idea or experience when you're when we're worshiping in our mind, we 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 unite that our worship. We unite that with every every being on the planet that at that time is also worshiping, and then we unite it with ev everyone that's in in the system. And in your mind, you unite it with everyone that might be adoring God at that time to this to the local universe, and so on up the chain. And 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 it's something really beautiful to to imagine all that worship and God from paradise seeing just this bright light starting from Urantia and just spreading out bigger and bigger towards him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a beautiful image. Thank you, Lawrence. Uh, you know, mind is such an interesting part of what we're talking about here. And, and what, what is shared with us is that mind is in a sense, a sense of circuitry. So in a certain sense, when we're worshiping, we're probably in some kind of communion or connection, you're right, with every other being that might be worshiping at that moment in time. Uh, and I think our ability to sense that, we, we, we can sense it in, in a nascent way, in a very early way. I think our ability to sense that is very young. It's very ill-developed. And I think that sense of communal worship and being part of a worshiping body that's much larger I think that will grow. I think it will grow tremendously uh, as we move through uh, the eternal journey. Um, but I think you're right. We begin it down here, and it's really wonderful. And you and Jimmer, that's that's neat. That's a neat theme that you guys shared. Thank you. And I think that is, and it's part of the theme of unifying our different faculties, our different capabilities in this life. And I do think when we engage in prayer and in worship on a regular basis, we do business with God. Uh, there is a maturing function. And our minds, I think, clarify. They get more ordered, more di directed toward purposes that God has. Because when we, when we say to God, your will be done, I really want to be your instrument, right? Right. I think Jesus with the spirit of truth and the Father's indwelling spirit uh, inside each of us go to work. And I think they develop the the faculties in us and the and the uh, the capabilities in us. And I think our minds and our capabilities change. And I think they progress. So thank you, Patrick. And uh, uh, yeah, let's go to Carol Ray. Hi, Carol. Nice to see you. Hi. First, I would like to say thank you for doing this. And also, Elizabeth, we extend our prayers to your challenges today. And we miss you. Um, but yeah, this is a you talk about the uh the companionship, and that's that's what this is. This is companionship around all of us together that have the same goal of following God's will and you know, listening to the spirit of truth. Um, and that helps us get back on the track. You know, life can be distracting. <laughs> mm -hmm. And sometimes we falter. And I think that uh, gatherings like this really help us get back on track. Michael Hagen was in our group as well. We all agreed on your questions as far as what spirituality has brought to our lives. It's given us strength and inspiration and a direction. And uh, Newamanya also mentioned that uh, by having um, the spirit of God in our lives and practicing it on a regular basis helps us to tolerate and love our neighbors better. 
which goes back to the theme of the family of God. And it's, it's kind of like, uh, you know, when your children step out of line and aggravate you, you still love them. And so that's, that's what um, uh, following God and, and understanding the spirit of truth and Jesus teachings have teach us to, to love each other, even when we annoy each other. Hmm. <laughs> yes, maybe even especially when we annoy each other. <laughs> yeah. So thank you. Oh, thank you, Carol Ray. Yeah, um, this is not an easy journey, this life. And, and I think one of the great gifts God has given us is each other. Uh, and, and those of us who have entered that journey and really embraced it and taken it, taken uh, you know, the faith step to say, I want to move forward with you, God, on this journey of relationship to share my inner life with you. And, and uh, when we come together and we have that common motivation, we can provide tremendous help for each other. So I think you're, you're, that emphasis is right on target. So part of what's unifying is what we do together when we gather like this. It's, it's encouraging that that there are others among us who feel moved to live the spiritual life we need that encouragement because life's not easy and, and life has tough stretches and it's especially in those tough stretches when we need to come together and really pray for each other and support each other um so that's a big part of it you know it's a big part of the company the company part of it is mutual support and uh yeah so enough said on that thank you carol ray i appreciate that um and then you mentioned two things in your talk about uh being receptive and attentive and and i looked in the you know the word search in the arrangement book those words were never used directly with Jesus, but we know he was both of those things as well as many other things. He was, you know, re receptive to everyone that was ready, and he was attentive to them as well. So I really liked those two words that you brought up today. Yeah, do a search on receptivity, see what you come up with. So, you know, different forms of some of those words. And the yeah, word, that's true. Yeah. And the word uh listening anyways yeah. there's there's uh, so, uh there's the passage where jesus is talking about after after we have uh put brought our prayers to god our requests to god he said he encouraged us really to sit in what he called uh, a silent a state of silent receptivity to and, and to listen and he uses the word listen to uh to listen to the inspiration, the response of God in response to our prayers. And he said that that, that response and that receptive state is most effectively encouraged in a state of worship. That when we are in a state of worship, we are in a state of silent receptivity. So that God, and, and it may not come directly, it may come as sort of a, appearing in our lives at other times, but when we engage in worship, we are in a state of openness and receptivity and uh, i remember it's kind of a, a funny little line that most people when they pray it's like they call god up on the phone and they talk their hearts out they unburden themselves for a, <laughs> an hour or two and then they hang up <laughs> they don't it's sit like unless they don't sit and receive oh. what god wants to give them in response and so that's a big part of it and that's part of why worship, I think, is so critically important is because it opens up the channels where God can give us what God hopes to give us in response to our entreaties, you know. And uh, the, the more we pray spiritually for spiritual things, the more God, I think, can give us. So, yeah, listening, and I appreciate your putting that front and center for us, for us, John. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, good. We're we're just about at the end of our uh, hour and a half period, so I want to say thank you so much to everybody for coming for uh, overcoming the uh, technological hurdles we had today uh, and showing up at our gathering for homecoming. And 
please come back next week. We're going to be talking next week about seven circles of family relationship. I find this really fascinating. And they're not minor circles. There are actually seven different levels of living family relationship, and I'll just list them for you here. And we're going to get into them in some depth next uh, next Sunday in Homecoming. The first uh, is the, the original family, the Trinity, right? The eternal father, eternal, uh, the infinite, the universal father, eternal mother, son, and infinite spirit. And they are genuinely a family who love each other and serve each other and help each other. And then the inner family that each of us has. Uh, next is the home family and the home families that we have participated in, uh, which has both provided challenges and opportunities. We'll look at that. So the original family, the inner family, the home family, the faith family, which is what we're doing here, gatherings of like-minded believers. The interfaith family is the, uh, uh, the next circle of family relationships, the global family, and then eventually the universal family, right? I think that's seven. The original family, inner family, home family, faith family, interfaith family, uh, global family, and then the universe family of all of our celestial sisters and brothers in the eternal journey. So we're going to be looking at the implications of the fact that family plays out on all of these multiple levels uh, throughout creation. So uh, please join us. And again, uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Stay close to God. Stay grounded, rooted in God's indwelling presence and the master's presence with us and our wonderful angelic friends who are with us. And uh, I hope your week is full of spiritual uh, fruits and gifts. And we'll see you next uh, see you next Sunday at homecoming. Lots, lots of love to you all.